Yeah, so I've just been asked to provide just a, a short short talk here just um, in regards to the the partnership and my role here was to try to help coordinate the partnership and coordinate the funding behind that. But I thought there's some good reflections that um, are, are good to uh, look at, at you know, w w when you're at the end of a successful partnership. And so I'm kind of building off here is the, um, the adage around good things take time. And that really can be led through to um, impactful research. And what, what does that mean in that sense? And it's often, it means it's, it's impactful research, research is built on this coordinating a suite of advances over time. So what we see today is, is built on a, a, back, a back story of, of a number of different um, advances that have led together. And to do that, you really, it, it needs a degree of co that coordination really does rely on um, partnerships and in particular enduring partnerships because things can take a, a case over multiple years. So this next slide just kind of gives an example on the context of this uh, partnership with Hawke's Bay that we've, we've been running now. And if you look back, it it's, um, starts in that 2017-2018 where the, um, the regional councils across New Zealand came together and, and put a, a case through to, to the government of the time through the um, Provincial Growth Fund there to get uh, co-funding around LIDAR across the, across the country. So there was a partnership that was established at that point, which we were able to um, then later leverage on. And alongside that, there was um, at Manaki Whenua here, we had a series of research programmes which all kicked off at different series of times, and I've just highlighted three here which have directly fed into the work that we've um, been doing with Hawke's Bay here. There's the Advanced Remote Sensing Aotearoa program, and that was looking at advances around um, LCDB and, and, and the use of remote sensing data. Then there was um, the Smarter Targeting of Erosion Control, as Hughes mentioned earlier, um, which has led through to a lot of advances in, in regards to um, our erosion and, and, the, and the work that, that Hugh talked about. And then the work that um, Jan has been talking about was um, kicked off in a, a Catalyst Fund project, which was a collaboration between New Zealand and Singapore. So they were all ticking along in the background there, but again, started you know, a, a number of years ago. And, and really, we started picking up this, this uh, project with uh, Hawke's Bay uh, around that 2020 kind of um, time. There was uh, Hawke's Bay were starting the, the, the LiDAR acquisition at that stage and then there was processing and eventual delivery. Um, but during that time we, we, we did actually start talking with, with Hawke's Bay because of the long-term relationship we've got there around you know, the type of opportunities that, that the LiDAR could enable and then the type of applications that could be involved. And there was a number of Hawke's Bay staff and Manaki Whenua staff kind of worked through, came up with a big um, list of projects. And Melissa Robson Williams helped us through that, and then it kind of got watered down to the projects we've ended up presenting today, which kicked off in that 2020 and came through to 2024. And amongst there, there were some curveballs that we all had to deal with. There was the the first kind of lightning bolt, as such as obviously the COVID pandemic that came through, and and we had to work through that as 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 a um, as a partnership. And, and with people and all the reper repercussions that came through from that. And then obviously for the Hawke's Bay, there was the major one, which was Cyclone Gabrielle arriving, which again, the, the project had to, to flex and, and move around um, because yeah, it had a big impact and a big impact on, on, on staff and, and priorities of, of in terms of what we were all focused on. So if we look at the kind of strengths that kind of came out of this, there was um, there's this multiplier effect so these gains that we've that we've seen today, some of the outputs, some of the products, some of the tools, they are kind of multiplied on these pre-existing relationships and projects, and they're often built up over years. And there's this clear benefit, which I think this this project's illustrated of this of these coordinated kind of long-term partnerships, in this case between government, council, and research organisations. So again, working together to think of how can we get these multiplier benefits. Um, and then also thinking outside of the individual RFP to single project type contracting approach, thinking of that kind of program, thinking of that partnership, thinking about how can we maximise the benefits from this case from a, a, an incredibly rich data set that was going to be coming coming through and online. And as I talked about, there's this um, the flexibility to work through these curveballs, and that comes down to those trusted relationships, those good communications between each. Uh, organisation, but also between the, the different individuals working on the different projects in the organisations. 
as we've learnt, all learnt in the last couple of years, these curveballs can come through and um, they can be, you know, they have some significant impacts. And, and really, I think it's uh, highlighting this that you know this interstaff collaboration is gold. It's really important for for research, and um, which comes down to that last point there that it's that really you know impactful research um, is really benefits being gra grounded in the application kind of context. So that's where working between the staff on the council and the staff at Manaki Whenua there, um, that's where the gold is, is in terms of shaping. And it's a two way process. It's a two way um, coming back from you know, the researchers about what's possible and, and, and um, how things could be done, and then from the council, them also coming back and saying, well, that'll be really useful because we could apply it out in this area. What about this issue and how does that work within our region? And so there's some real benefits which come through from that, and that all is that keeping up that communication together, work, stepping outside of and away from that a pure contractual relationship. So, overall, that's, that's why I just want to. Uh, Sum that up. I really want to thank everybody for their time today. I want to thank, in particular, the presenters and 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 who, who have presented the different projects. I really want to thank the staff from Hawkes Bay that have been on this journey with us. As I said, it goes back um, a number of years there, and it's really great to see a whole lot of really useful things that have come out of it, and and also to see their application and, and uptake through there. So I think now we are going to end the session. Is that correct, there, Flo? Yes. This... <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll stop sharing there, and I don't think there's any hangover questions, so otherwise we will um, thank you everyone for their time, and we can all get back to the rest of our days. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Kia ora.